We're thrilled to have the lovely Lottie Leaf, CEO and founder, sorry. We're thrilled to have the lovely Lottie Leaf, CEO and founding director of the Jura Society on this week's episode of The Midlife Mentors. The company encourages women to invest in their relationship with their wealth, no matter what stage of life they're at, through empowering them to make the steps to build confidence and develop their financial, social and emotional well-being. On this episode, we discuss good financial management practices and how wealth is inextricably linked with living a life you desire and deserve. Hi, I'm James Davis. And I'm Claire Davis. We're the Midlife Mentors, here to lift the lid on how to achieve health and happiness. The balanced, no nonsense way. Welcome to another episode of the Midlife Mentors with me, James. And me, Claire. How are you all? Wow, what have you been up to? Well, we had your birthday and we were away down in Somerset, weren't we? Yeah, I think we discussed my birthday on the last podcast, so no one needs to hear about my birthday all again. Well, you unless... did just keep extending it. <laughs> it was still going on on Sunday and Monday. We went to your <laughs> mum and dad's house, you demanded more birthday cake. I did um, demand more uh, Colin the Caterpillar from m and if you've never, well, if you're listening to this. In... Other caterpillars are available. <laughs> yeah, what's the other caterpillar? Um, it was Calvin or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something, <laughs> something like that. But yes, um, Colin the Caterpillars is for Marks and Spencers and it's my favourite birthday cake, but I didn't realise my parents were going to buy me another one. <laughs> so I've eaten two over my birthday, pretty much the whole thing. I know, but we are here. We're now um, come to the end of summer, I guess, because we're into mm. September just, and a really exciting time moving into autumn. But we're really love thrilled it. to have uh, a great guest with us today, talking all about finances, which is mm. something I think everyone can benefit from. We could certainly benefit from. Definitely. Ter- well, that still terrifies me. Finance still is still terrifying. We're hoping ourselves to get some like, clear <laughs> pointers on this conversation. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Lottie Leaf of the Dura Society. Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> How are you? I'm, I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me. Delighted to be here today and talking about fun finance. I mean, nobody really wants to talk about this, but it's so cool crucial so yeah yes I know well actually there's a good point because like finance should be fun you know I think I think a lot of people have like I know certainly I do a mental block when I hear finances mm. I'm always just start thinking of all the spreadsheets I have to do each month for my accounts and I'm just kind of glaze over a bit but yeah it should be making more fun so I I certainly have this and I, I talk to about I talk to people about belief systems all the time so I'm very aware of my own whether I've actually done something about all of them um, is another thing. And I certainly haven't necessarily done as much work as I could have done around this. But, you know, I, I was not very good at math. So this is the story I tell myself. Ooh, okay. I wasn't very good at maths when I was younger. And I, you know, I found it really boring. I didn't like it. So now I tell the story and I'm 43. Tell the story still that I'm not good with figures and numbers. But um I am changing that. I am changing, changing that. that yeah, and I think a lot of people have that same attitude, but actually finance isn't just about maths. And I think that's where that block comes yeah. in because it is about lifestyle. It is about doing what you want to do. And then you use it as that tool to be able to navigate what you want to do in your life. So get rid of like the maths and just use the figures as a identifier to, yeah. to, to as a vehicle, really, I think, trying to reframe it like that. Yeah, Love that. So we met Lottie on a... Um, online webinar. webinar through the lovely Sarah Davison, who we are doing an event with as well later on this month. 24th of September. Actually, I will put a link to anyone that wants to come to that um, event. It's in London. It's going to be really, really exciting. Not just because we're there, but because um, Sarah um, has brought together lots of amazing um, experts in their field. Lottie is one of them. It's going to be talking to people about um finances and getting their finances together um around divorce because i know you know james and i have both been through divorces it can be a really overwhelming time um when you're going through all that emotion to then be thinking about the finances and i i know that it just bamboozled me and i kind of shut down um, yeah well exactly and i think that is a crucial point and, and what i try to do with jura is 
making yourself prepared in advance of any crisis because when you're going through a crisis like a divorce the last thing you want to be doing is learning a new language like finance or law or anything like that so what we try to do is educate people through the whole of their life cycle of, of little bits that they need to be signposted to before that overwhelm emotion shutdown happens because as you rightly say it does happen it's a big wave of shit I don't know if I can yeah, say that on yeah, here. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we love it well I like a good old swear so no worries <laughs> but, but you know it's the lot you know you're, you're just trying to keep yourself in survival mode and you can't make definitive decisions when you're going through all of that and the finance is a key part of the untangling process in mm. divorce so yeah exactly yeah and we're, we're really looking forward to that event um and then obviously Lottie's there and then a few other people are going to be there so it's kind of tackling the I suppose the uh, the difficult time and the challenges of divorce from all different angles so the health and mm. wellness and then the finance and that the legal side of things so um I will put a link to listeners I will put a link to that if you're in London um what date is it I think 24th the 24th September. of September so if you're around we would and you know you, you need that support then please please do come to that because it's going to be it's going to be amazing and you, you are going to feel like you're less alone and and more connected to to people um yeah so yeah you touched there on on a little bit of what you do Could you explain a little bit more about what the the Dura Society does and what inspired you to set it up yes good question um so my background is I studied design at university, right? So I'm actually creative at heart. I somehow fell into wealth management, realized that I didn't really understand what the terminology was. And, and for me, it was all very hypothetical. And I was like, what is happening? And this big gap between the financial markets and me as a human. And I was like, there's something in between here. There's that space that I want to explore because I don't understand it. I then learned to understand it and thought, right, what can I do to present it to people predominantly women in a more digestible interactive fun way uh, you know making it beautiful but intelligent and so I set up the Jura Society back in 2016 I think I just qualified as a financial advisor at that point um, and so I was still working in the system so I worked at Cousinove I then went to set up the family division at another place that I won't name um, and realized that there was this huge gap between the emotional you know baggage and the shadow of money work and actually what the institutions sell to us so I wanted to explore that more so our three pillars are women wealth and well-being I wanted to really have a collaborative and multidisciplinary approach to wealth as well because I think people just think maths fine you know bank accounts these sort of key initial you know words that come up but actually there's security, there's protection, there's ambition, there's, you know, uh, all of these really exciting words that rarely are ever brought up. So, you know, you can talk about collecting art and, you know, investing and getting people to build up the courage to, to tap into these markets, which are predominantly male, stale and pale, and saying, actually, it is inclusive and everybody should get involved. Oh, I love I that, Lottie. I really do. I really do. Because it's, it's such a different way of coming at it's such a different way of coming at finances and we we are just taught to be really really scared of it and mm -hmm. and not explore it because we're scared of it and actually the fact that you've got um women wealth and you know well-being as part of that it's so it's so powerful and actually it really shifts the dynamic of how you feel about it energetically doesn't it yeah, definitely. And I think that's something that I really hope that people get out of interacting with us when we do our events and panels and all of these kind of things is that they're not alone and it's not as scary as they first thought. And actually, you know, tipping, dipping the toe in, in the water and being with a, a community of other people in similar situations makes you feel really empowered to go and make strong financial decisions later on empowered that's the word i love that and i love your opening the door because my my take on it is like that whole world of like wealth management is, is kind of like a, a hidden closed world right for oh, so yeah. many people unless you're actually almost born into it and brought up around it you know most of us have the experience of like you go and open your your parents get you to go and open your first bank account as a kid and you get your free mm. pencil case or whatever yeah. and that's as much you know oh i've got a current account and a savings account and maybe later on you get a credit card but there's so many, many more options over there, different asset classes. We've seen today um, the growth of things like fractional ownership of mm. exotic sports cars and things like that. It's, it's just great that you're doing this work to kind of lift the lid on it and make it more accessible, I think. Well, yeah, and also I think from 
a generational perspective I think because we never had any of this talk to us at school I mean I would love a whole host of our generation being able to teach our children this this skill it's a life skill that we is know. more important than anything else exactly and I think that a huge well, actually I'm doing a talk on Monday with the guys at Climb Watt Hambro's um for next gen so kids who are going to go off to university crucial time probably the first time they've ever really had free reign of managing their money and that is where a lot of people start to build bad habits because you know the the credit card people will be throwing stuff your way you're getting the student debt you're having to pay your rent you want to spend all your money on booze you need to actually start to prioritize and you know the overdrafts you know a lot of the banks encourage students they'll be like it's a 0% overdraft yes. take two and a half grand free money they don't realize that they have to pay that money back later because that 0% will actually you know knock off and then they're yeah it's it can be a, a deadly spiral if you haven't got anybody just nudging you in the right direction and going have you thought about what the implications are because it's not in the bank's interest to educate no no, no. And that's so it's actually against their interest I mean, if, you know it's like well, it is. Yeah. it's that old saying isn't it like if, if you owe the bank like twenty thousand pounds you've got a problem if you owe the bank 200 million pounds the bank's got a problem mm-hmm. but the bank actually all, all financial institutions more or less thrive of having people in in debt to them right yeah absolutely oh, absolutely and and it's really sad actually the um the spectrum of the affordability so for instance if you have a million pounds it's going to be a lot cheaper for you to be doing banking you'll have a lot more options available to you because you've got that um liquidity or you know you've got that ability to show that you can afford it when actually the people who need that help the most they're charged the most as well and i think that that is a really really um dark side of the financial system that we're in is that if you need the help it's going to cost you more and you get in that cycle yeah and it is really dark and it's it's down to people like you that are helping educate and empower people it's really really important work that you do and the fact that you're going and talking to you know those students those next level students is really really important and great work really yeah. great work yeah and just getting them to be comfortable with it as well I think because when you're going to university too you're going to be mixing with a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds as well and I think that's another thing that touches on anybody no matter where what age they're from wherever they are you always have that keeping up with the Joneses aspect yeah. and the lifestyle creep which is where when you're earning more you'll be spending more and it's understanding and coming back to like what your needs are versus what your wants are yes and and keeping that you know uh control of your finances is really difficult um because there's so many fun things to do in the world and well, I you know. do them all at once. <laughs> it's a problem it is a problem yeah. i just want to share this actually I, my first job was at harrods mm. what a t- i mean it was a great <laughs> first job but my goodness i mean i basically gave them all their money back because i got paid mm. and then i used to just go spending it in harrods and i had absolutely no idea how to manage my money at all um and and, and... well exactly and things like pensions you know when i was growing up i thought pensions were just something old people got you know Mm. you don't you don't know that actually you have to put aside that now there's no such thing really as a defined benefit scheme which is where companies you stay with them forever and then they pay you a salary basically when you retire that doesn't happen now and the state pension will barely get you through anything you know if you look at the cost of living crisis what are they saying three thousand pounds or so a year for your electricity bills if the state pension is about ten thousand pounds a year the maths doesn't add up so getting back to the math there you do need a little bit of math but just to see you know the the balance of the scales there what's going in what's going out is not going to align so yeah that actually brings us nicely to this next question we've got and uh, you demonstrate this beautifully actually on the, on the live webinar you had some like general guiding principles around finance that really stuck with me but then elu- eluded my financial brain <laughs> <laughs> what were they income and out income oh, yeah. and out yeah so exactly um, yeah. yeah i mean like finances are even more of a concern you know for our midlife um listenership um and our audience you know it is a concern um do you have any of those general principles that you can advise people to follow in terms of their finances yes okay so i think the one that you were just touching on is uh know your numbers so by the numbers if you think of it as a grid right so you've got what you earn what you owe 
what you save and what you spend. And so if you think of it as your personal balance sheet, I don't know if that's going to get too technical, but you're basically looking at the cash flow. So what's coming in and what's going out and then what your, um, your asset base is in terms of your savings, your property, any investments you've got and any debts that you've got. So what you would want them to do is to align nicely. So when you're thinking earn, owe, save, spend. Earnings, that's what's coming in, what you owe. That's what it's on your debt sheet. Then what you're saving, that's your assets. And then what you're spending is your day-to-day -day spending. So all of these, if you put them all together, should, I think that's the first step for anybody is figure out those numbers on a monthly basis. Mm. Because that Most would be- people don't. No, you don't. Because things go out of your bank account so quickly now. You know, subscriptions, everything's automated. You're like, yeah, I'll just whack it on my card here, whack it on my card here. It's invisible. And I think that, again, is a tactic that has also encouraged us all to become great consumers. You know, don't think about building assets. Take out some debt. It's cheap debt. It's great. Go and buy a load of stuff. Oh, great. Now what? What next? Um, and so that is quite a crucial thing. And then the second thing that I try and get clients of mine to do um, and anybody really is a SWOT analysis of your finances so you've got you know where you currently sit and I don't know if you understand or know of uh, SWOT analysis so it's your strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats for what will happen to your future finances okay so what could that be so it could be losing your job it could be a divorce it could be so those would be threats opportunities what could that be getting uh, a new job, you know, getting uh, a windfall, an inheritance or something like that, you know, what's going to bolster that up? And then, um, you know, spending habits, all of these sort of things. And you kind of pop them into that box as well. And then what you can do is plan around that. And the sort of things that you could then do to, to protect those are looking at things like insurance, income, in, uh, income protection, building up your emergency fund. That's something that, you know, the fund advisors recommend three to six months i think now because the markets are a little bit choppy try and even do six to 12 months and that's in cash so you've got that readily accessible so you don't have to go and get a credit card or get expensive debt in order to finance any emergencies that crop up which could be replacing windows or you know your car's dead or something like that where you'd have to fork out quite a, a significant amount of money or you know if you're renting or paying your mortgage it's having that pot of cash on the side just in case something happens where you would be a little bit screwed um mm. otherwise and it's so funny isn't it just talking to you there it's like such a quick fix society now isn't it i want it i'm gonna have it now i want mm. it i'm gonna have it now and we just don't we've not learned again it's this whole thing about not learning about delayed gratification because mm. most people are probably and then me included i have got we have got better at this because we've had to because of our own business but yeah. you know it's it's Oh, I don't want to know about that. I, I want pleasure now. I mm -hmm. want pleasure now. I want that thing now. And um, I'll worry about it later. And well, that's also that's where the this debt. the <laughs> buy now, pay later, where that's all been targeted towards Gen Z and millennial buyers. It's all associated with fast fashion things. There's nothing actually very useful that you need to buy instantaneously and do it on buy now, pay later. But places like Klarna have grown. They're not regulated. People don't realize that actually they're taking out a line of debt or credit, um, which can impact their credit score later down the line as well. And that's something as well that people need to keep an eye on is this magical credit score number. Um, and so yeah. you can check that on places like Experian and there's a couple of other places as well. And what that enables you to do, because some people don't really know what it means, but that is basically your scorecard to go to banks to say, can I have some cheaper um, credit lines or when you're going to a mortgage or anything like that, it shows your responsibility over managing any debt or money that you've got. And ways that you can increase that as well is making sure you're on the postal register, that you're paying all of your bills in time. If you do have credit cards as well, you've got something called uh, your credit utilisation. So say you've got three credit cards, they're all a thousand pounds. If you've maxed out all of them, you're going to have pretty bad like credit utilisation. It's showing that you're still not managing it if you're paying it off. Um, the best thing to do is to leave some buffer it, you know you're not maxing out everything really I didn't explain that particularly yeah no that's really helpful that's <laughs> yeah, that really that's really helpful that's really helpful because um again that you just mentioned Klarna there I mean it, ter it, it terrifies, terrifies me. yeah so, we see a lot of um, 
we talk about influences. Yeah, I'm seeing like, and literally, yeah, their whole feed is just them like ordering like boxes and boxes of clothes and then trying them on. And then the next day they're doing, and it's all going, it's all going on like delayed payments. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, this is it's crazy. really bad. It's it's yeah. It, it's a shame, and I think people need to be aware. And it goes back to um, the understanding of your needs and your wants. And I think that there is a big disillusionment with the Instagram sort of society, where you're shown all of this perfection, you're shown all of these trends that are coming through so quickly as well. And if you want to be part of that trend, it's going to cost you money. And you know, I do like that we're seeing a lot of that. Re, uh, what was it? Reduce, reuse, recycle mentality, the rental things. But but again, that's still tapping into consumerism. Um, and when we've all been locked in in lockdown as well, the the most joy people could get is to buy things that are new, you know, and having that come to their house. So I can completely empathise with, you know, the, the the rational reasons for why people are doing it. But it's not necessarily always great for your bank balance. Um, no, I know, and we're going to have a, a whole swathe of society that aren't going to be able to afford homes, and you know, it's bad enough now, but they're not, because they get, they're so in debt and don't understand the credit score, and when you go to get your mortgage, that's your, you know, that all is taken into account, it's just, yeah. Mm. The quick but again, the fo- affordability as well, so, you know, if you look at how much you're expected to put down for your, um, your deposit you're looking at what the repayment things are like repaying your mortgage is cheaper than it is to rent currently however the barriers to getting the deposit and and showing your affordability for that because people aren't having the opportunity to stockpile and to put that fund together because they're too busy spending it all on rent it's this really mishmash cycle crazy, that needs to it? be addressed yeah crazy so your um big on creating a deeper connection you've obviously mentioned um one of the pillars there which was wealth and wellness why is that why is that important to to you and to your business and how you help your clients yeah well um I mean okay so I uh, okay a little bit of background on me so basically mm. uh, my dad was a accountant and so he was always in control of the family finances you know and, and a punishment that I used to have would be being marched to the bank to print off my bank statements, especially at university, and show him what I'd been spending on. This just resulted in me taking out another card and being like, fuck you, Dad. Um, You're not... So anyway, (laughs) that's the kind of thing he would do. And he was always... Like, that was his role. Now, my mum is blind, and so she has always been very dependent on him, and I can see that real frustration in lack of independence and lack of financial ability as well. So... They're also kind of getting divorced, but that's a whole nother uh, tsunami that we don't need to go into here. Um, mm. So it, it's being trapped in unhealthy relationships, I think, is really, really critical. And having finance brings you freedom. And I think that having that under control gives you a strong sense of identity and of security as well. So it all links back into having a really good sense of wellness because you've got your finances in check, which allows you to do better things with your life. So for me, if that makes sense. Mm, that's, that's, thank you that. for sharing that with us. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks for um, your personal story as well. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Cause it, it's, it's so true that actually you can feel so disempowered and so trapped. And then who knows what happens in those relationships when you haven't got that sense of ownership of your, of your future basically. Because at the end of the day, we do need money. Mm-hmm. um and we we need that in order to be able to have our freedom like you said so yeah oh, absolutely and there's so many so many um horrible stories that are coming out now and I do do a bit of work with the charity surviving economic abuse a brilliant charity and they are really highlighting the coercive control nature of finances within relationships and they did yes. a big campaign with HSBC and I think that you know, just saying this isn't okay is a big, big step. And, and a lot of that has been going on during COVID and the domestic abuse that is associated with restriction in your spending. Some people will have their income put into like a shared bank account that they then don't have access to. And it's really, really, um, it's horrible to see. But yeah, yeah I can imagine. I can imagine. I think I've seen some of the ads actually on the tube. With the puppet with the H- hands. Yes. Yeah, yeah with yeah. HSBC, yeah. I think that is. Yes. Yeah. Really it's powerful. Work. Really right. powerful. Yeah, really beautiful work again, Lottie. Really amazing. Yeah. Um, so we, we touched on it there. We're, we're currently facing a bit of an interesting situation, aren't we? We've got um, the prospect of rising living costs, 
recession looming, inflation going up. What what should or could be people be doing to kind of insulate themselves from this? Yes, I mean, oh gosh, I mean, after the last two years, this is all we really need, isn't it? That's what um, my friend said to me this morning. She <laughs> she runs her own business. She was like, "Oh, here it, you know." Yeah. So what, next? Yeah. what next? What <laughs> next? Um, so I think to start with going back to that knowing your number know where you're currently sitting understanding what your needs are to make sure that you've got your lights on roof over your head heating you can get all, all of your necessities under wraps and then building up that emergency fund as well if you've got any surplus cash putting that aside and making sure that you know you 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 know, reducing some of the luxuries, you know, we don't all need a holiday to Barbados, although we would all really like one. I think maybe now the time is to really address what affordability looks like for the next couple of years. It's looking long term. It's not just looking for the day to day now. It's understanding what substitutions you can make in your life as well in terms of habits like, you know, uh, coffees, eating out, you know, try and do things that are a little bit more social in the home, come back to the home, be with your friends, try and be a little bit more economical on that, you know, looking back at like the 1950s or anything, home ec stuff, that is where I think it would be really helpful, but I think as well, just for your own good, like cooking at home, is actually really quite enjoyable once you get the hang of it, you know, and there's lots of, um, you know, Gusto and all those places. I haven't actually done, I really want to do a calculation of like, you know, what actual the cost benefit of is it. Um, and, but oh, I think- I'd be really interested. Oh, can you tell us? Because a lot of our clients, you know, they use some of these, they're really busy, busy people. Yeah. And um, so they're not getting home till late. The last thing they want to do is cook a meal and things like mm. that. So they use a lot of um, Hello Fresh. And exactly. Yeah. And so yes, if you do come up with the finances <laughs> on that, let us know. Yeah, I was like, hmm, because actually with that, but then, yeah, I mean, it just, again, it comes down to convenience and that's convenience, something yeah. as well. It's like, do you need to get Ubers all the time? Could you get a bicycle? Maybe not in London, it's a bit scary, but you know, um, making sure that you're still safe and again going back to inflation and the rising costs of bills try and negotiate as much as you can and get all of that lined up for the next 12 months really go down I know we mentioned spreadsheets and, and the grossness of them at the beginning but they are a really useful organizing tool you don't have to use that though get a notebook whatever works for you jot it all down say right what's my electric what's my gas what's my buildings insurance contents insurance all of these like essentials that you need to run your household and and provide you with security in your lifestyle as well have all of those jotted down and do your own cash flow if that's possible you know and if it's not go and speak to somebody who can help you to get all these figures together I do this a lot with my clients where it's okay, this is what you're going to be spending each month, right? Who do we need to call? How can we negotiate this? If we pay it upfront, will it be cheaper in the long run? Can we secure any of these uh, rates now looking at remortgaging, anything like that? Try and do it now before it really, the, the curve comes up as well. I think, I think that's people, important. I think people feel really held, again, it's about a confidence thing, isn't it? I think people feel really held to ransom by, you know, by these energy companies and, you know, they don't actually know how far they can push back and, and what they can negotiate and whether they can or not. I think it's just a very, it's a very confusing minefield. I don't think we've got the confidence to necessarily go out there and do it ourselves. So people like you saying what you can do and what you can't do is so helpful. Yeah, and I think even like, you know, looking at what Martin Lewis does with uh, Money Saving Expert, brilliant. Like always has lovely little tips and tricks in there as well. And again, I think it's just understanding what you've currently got because a lot of it is ostrich in the sand, heads down, la la la, don't want to think about it. But actually, it's it's dusting out, clearing out the cobwebs, and going right. These are my piles. Good bad, but good pile, bad pile. Tackle the bad pile. You know, get all of that out of the way. You'll feel a lot more sort of relax. You know, dedicate time to doing it as well. Like every month, I sit down and do my own financial review for myself. I've got a very sexy spreadsheet, um, <laughs> and I go through. You know, what my bank account levels are at. What the uh, investments are at what my pension's looking like and I do a review on that as well just to just check Amazing. I mean, could, you just need be, to could you just come to our life basically <laughs> if you could just we could have a lottie in our world just <laughs> <All right. laughs> making us do that every month it, it just, yeah. just, we joke that like, I used to hate spreadsheets but I actually really love them now because <laughs> it's, it's now. just empowerment right you know I, I know as long as I'm keeping that spreadsheet updated I can go in and it gives me a snapshot of, of where we are at that moment in time and then he shouts it out to me, me like that. Oh, that's 
that's nice. Right. <laughs> then, you feel, then you feel empowered. You're in control. You know what's going exactly. on. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, loves to have that that I certainty. So I know. Yeah, I think that's really it. It's it, it's understanding where you currently are because then you can make uh, decisions based on that. You can't you can't decide on something you don't know about really. Exactly. So a story of recent years has been the rise and the crash of crypto. So I want to ask mm-hmm. another question. Crypto, my goodness. So, yeah, <laughs> what do you think the outlook for crypto is? Because obviously it was... Everyone was buying everyone it, especially was... in lockdown. And there was like a surge in people putting, putting their furlough money into Bitcoin mm-hmm. and yeah. other currencies. Yeah, so are we, I, I know it might be a bit of an a, a uncomfortable... Left field. Yeah, one. left field one to ask you about, but it would oh. be great to have your, your thoughts on that. So, um... I think like if you're looking at the utilization of Bitcoin and you're looking at what a lot of the governments are doing. So you've got like uh, the States and you've got the UK who are actually building their own uh, cryptocurrencies as well on their platform because of the utilization and um, it does have a role to play in sort of financial security and the transactional benefits of it because of the speed of it, the uh, Anonymity. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> an- 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 <laughs> yeah, we know which word you mean. Yeah. Um, and I think in the art world as well, NFTs. I, I actually just did a podcast, uh, podcast uh, Instagram Live earlier with an artist, and that has really helped her to cross uh, different audiences by using NFTs because she's based in London, but then she's doing stuff out in Dubai. And there's a lot of the cool kid next gen stuff, which is way beyond me. Um, but looking at the metaverse and the way that the engagement is there and video games, and there's a lot of cool stuff going on, which is more than just buying Bitcoin. I think as a store of value, a store of wealth, like, you know, what you would consider gold or some people think property as a store of wealth, that also depends, um, maybe not so good, but as an actual transactional uh, currency, I think it does have its benefits, if that's, that's not really too complicated. Yeah. And I think everybody needs to just have a little bit, you know, eh, try it. Um, you know yeah. with any investment it's not guaranteed so don't necessarily use it as an investment as we've seen it's very volatile and for anyone who doesn't um, kind of uh, familiar with that term volatility is is basically where it is um, fluctuating against where the expectation is I would say mm. so it's going up or it's going down one day and it's very you know it looks like an ES, uh, ECG monitor yeah. but it, the, the, the heart rate so so something when it's more da, 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 more volatile which means it's slightly more risky probably more risky um and and rather than a, a smooth curve which is what you would hope to have um so yeah that's mm. but it's a good diversifier mm. Yeah, and it's really interesting to hear about stuff that's coming as well, like well, yeah, metaverse. Touch on the metaverse. <laughs> yeah, oh, I was just yeah. like, I actually just, I just not not from you, but I was like that. Oh, I cringed inside a bit. I was like, where is the world going? We're talking about the metaverse. Am I at my tomorrow? Didn't we already have this with like the Sims back in back in the yes. night? Yes. You pay oh to build things in a virtual place. Yeah, it's basically. I missed that bit as well. Oh, <laughs> I missed that one. It was great. It was so much fun. <laughs> I missed the first time round. Clearly, oh. I'm not cool at all. <laughs> um, everyone's financial situation is obviously different, mm-hmm. but if there was one bit of advice you could give someone, what would it be? Understand what you want out of life. I think that's the crucial bit um, because, yeah, as I mentioned before, finances is a tool to get you what you want. So you know if you can really set out some clear goals in the next and, and stagger them so short term medium term long term then what you do is you mold your finances around that so if it's you want to buy a house okay so what are the steps that i need in order to get to that what is the process and i think a lot of finance is about process and a lot of you know the professional world is about process and it's understanding how you get from a to b which is usually really murky and really complicated if you don't know what you're doing and so if you've got somebody who can help signpost you and it's not so much of a ping pong game then that can make your life a little bit easier but I think yeah having having clear goals which is probably what you do a lot with your clients as well and then using finance to activate those goals I think that's really key I love love that that. just knowing what you want yeah like so many people, don't, we don't, we don't we ask want, ourseles what we. Roadmap, yeah, yeah, most of us don't even know. I was saying that to a client this morning. You know, um, not in her case, but I was like, most of us don't actually. We know what we don't want. We mm-hmm. say what we don't want a, a lot. I don't want this. I don't want that. I'm moaning about this. But actually, let's put our energy into thinking: what do I want my life to look like? Like, yeah. 
let's and actually, reduce the stress in it as well yeah, yeah. like that actually instead of being blown around in the wind let's grab hold of the steering wheel and drive our own car where we where we want to go so exactly. i love that i love yeah. that right um if people have resonated with that i'm sure yes. they have so <laughs> How how can people get in touch with you? How can they work? Lottie, with you? how can they have get in touch coming, with you? Anything coming coming up you'd like to talk about? Oh, um, so on Instagram, the Jura Society website, thejurasociety.com. I'm on LinkedIn quite a bit as well. Um, we'll you, add all these links into the show yeah, notes, by the way, listeners. Pop those in there. What am I working on at the moment? I've actually got it. Oh, I don't know when this is going out, but I'm, I'm running a, a menopause event uh, next mm. week, on the 15th at, at Mortimer House. So I've got a, a wonderful panel of speakers that are covering all of the, the lifestyle, financial and legal aspects of the menopause, because that's a huge, huge... Um, <gasps> you should have had us on it! We do um, loads of menopause stuff. <laughs> I didn't know. I've been organising I know, this for months. I know. So you have to come along. You have to come yes. along. Yes. So well, that... It's great that you're doing all those conversations and that's, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about bringing more awareness to it. Well, definitely. And then I'm doing something on the philanthropy as well. So that's more uh, professional advisor focused as well, helping people to give better, um, charitable giving, philanthropy, building foundations. Mm -hmm. And then what I do when I'm not doing all of these things is I actually run a divorce concierge so i focus on the assets and the finances building a team around said client and getting them from that a to b and untangling it when they need their accountants they need tax advice they need property they need you know art collections maybe that are being moved they need the cash flow planning they need investment management and they need good people around them as well and so i act as a shock absorber when they are unable to get out of bed and i help them to you know guide them through all of that and i don't sell any products so I'm not an IFA. I think that's really uh, crucial to put out. I, I've been called a financial nanny. So if you think Mary Poppins with your finances, <laughs> spoonful of sugar, let's make it as enjoyable <laughs> as possible. It will be okay. That's the kind oh, of yeah, attitude yeah. that we have here. Lottie. Such a necessary service. I mean, like, yeah. yeah, we were saying at the start, like we've, we've both been through divorces and yeah. I think with all the emotional trauma, sometimes you, know, you haven't got the headspace to deal with the, the financial yeah. side of it as well. So yeah. and then great, we, great that you offer It's that incredible. Well, that's why we wanted to speak to you because when we heard about, when we did the webinar, uh, Sarah's webinar, we were like, oh my goodness, that is something. I just, I kept like laughing at James, just thinking, I wish we'd had <laughs> something like that to support us. So Honestly, it would be an absolute godsend, I'm sure, to so many people. Yeah, uh, and we, with... yeah sorry, Lottie, go on. I, I mean, I end up where I've been working with Roman for nearly 18 months now, but just because it's been so complex and she's just got so many different things going on. Um, but it's great because I'm just like basically on speed dial to her and anything that's worrying her, she's like, what do I do about this? What do I do about that? And I'm like, chill, let me make the call. I'll, I'll deal with it. You just sit there. Amazing. Fantastic. Amazing. Definitely wish I'd had you. But yeah. there we are. Um, and we then, know you now. You're in our world now. Yes. I'm in your world. Yeah, and you. you in person. Yeah. Um, obviously on the twenty fourth. I keep I don't know why. I tell you what, there's and we there's, might pop along on the fifteenth as well. And we yeah. might pop along on the fifteenth yeah. and support you. Absolutely. Cool. We'll we'll um we'll find out details about that as well. But we'll pop all the links. So any yes. um links that Lottie has, we'll we'll pop them in the show notes and then you'll know how to get hold of her and then obviously follow her on Instagram and things like that on and oh. on LinkedIn. So <laughs> everywhere. Yes, everywhere. 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 So many social media platforms. It's exhausting. Some might say too many. Too, uh, definitely yeah. too many. This is the woman that's just got herself on TikTok and finds it all a bit overwhelming. But oh, anyway, <laughs> it was a real pleasure to speak to you, Lottie. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much, guys. Really enjoyed it and looking forward to seeing you on the 24th. Yeah. You've been listening to The Midlife Mentors with Claire and James Davis. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you. So drop us a line at info at themidlifementors.com with any questions or topic suggestions. And make sure you join us on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can find us under The Midlife Mentors. Yeah.